Welcome back to the SA Weekly Talk Show. Your guest or our host, Mike Callahan, here with special guest Dylan of the Simple Grow team. We're going to be talking about some things around automations, but not really automations. We're going to be talking about the 15 things that you need to automate your estimating process for 2021. So a lot of people um, came into a private webinar that we did last Thursday, Dylan. Uh, we had a sold out crowd of 150 people plus because only 150 people were getting in there. So we've had a lot of people saying, hey, Mike, can you get Dylan on the SA Weekly Talk Show this week and go over the 15 must have things to go out and automate your estimates um, for this upcoming season. So I said, well, no better time. Let's come on a little bit earlier because uh, I've got a compressed schedule and Dylan had a very compressed schedule here uh, this week. But coming on a little bit early today, we're going to talk about the 15 must things um, or elements that you need to have in your service business, whether it's lawn care, home cleaning, pest control, the list goes on and on. So we're going to dive in and open up the screen here in a second and show you what it's all about. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Chris McCleary. What's up, brother? Hanging out with us here. Um, long time watcher. So Chris yeah. up in Northern Ontario, Canada. Whew. Our friend from North of the border, brother. So what we're doing, I want to say what's up to uh, Ryan Miller as well. What's up, brother? So um, basically Dylan, I've opened up the screen here. It looks like we can uh, see your slide deck. Um, looking forward to diving in and uh, I'm going to kind of ride shotgun. If you have any questions or thoughts uh, from me, Dylan, let me know. Otherwise, uh, the floor is yours. But um, if you guys have not met Dylan, uh, he scaled a seven figure business, uh, exited the business. He was acquired and he has joined the Simple Grow team to um, continue to allow us to help the service autopilot ecosystem build workflow and training uh, upon the amazing job that Service Autopilot launch and support team uh, does already. So this is just one of the things we want to build on top of the foundational things that SA is doing an amazing job with all the users. Um, so Dylan, the floor is yours. Let's see what the 15 things are that every service business needs to automate their estimating in 2021 and moving forward. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, th this is a great add-on, right, for, for any service business because a lot of your time as you scale out and as you start doing more email marketing and stuff like that is inevitably going to be tied up in, in speaking to customers, right? It's a great uh, use of resources, but obviously it's not very scalable, right? Not, not everybody has a 10 to 15 person uh, sales team uh, to be able to answer everybody as quickly as uh, customers are demanding nowadays, right? So we'll kind of break down uh, the basics of what is a chatbot, um, how you can be using it, what are the the key things that you need to have, and then um, you know what what simple growth is kind of recommending, whether you do it yourself or, or whether um, you, you potentially are looking at our our bot. So, kind of what is a chatbot? What's the difference between a chatbot and an estimator bot? Because they are uh, distinctly different, right? We're not just kind of talking about a bot that you're putting on your your page that might tell people what time you're open, right? That that's not really what we're talking about here today. That's what most people kind of know it as. What's the difference between a bot and me maybe just going on um, a landing page that's kind of like a shopping cart? I know a lot of the cleaning companies use something like Launch 27 where you can go and you can check yourself out. Uh, there's some pros to that. There's also some cons, right? So, so we'll go over that. Uh, why should you care, right? Why should you potentially be thinking about implementing a chatbot in your business? Um, the, the key thing is how is this going to help you scale? Uh, that's, that's what everybody kind of wants to know the exact reasons for that. And then we'll, we'll kind of go over how our bot works, right? And you can take some of these concepts, implement them yourself, or, um, you know, obviously talk to me and I'll, I'll uh, give my number where, uh, you guys can text or call later and uh, we can go into this a little bit further. Awesome, Dylan. I appreciate opening that up. And just one thing before we really dive into it, I want to, uh, focus on is if you saw my talk at SA Thrive, the virtual event uh, this this fall, my whole talk was around conversational marketing. So if you're trying to connect some of the dots of where does this all fit into my play and you're building this out yourself, um, conversational marketing is that new shift in buying. So if you go back to the days of old of bartering, where did the conver where did the sales revolve around? And it was all around the conversation. So today's consumer with the accelerated buying habits of on demand of Uber, Netflix, Amazon, list goes on and on and on. Today's consumer, especially during COVID and post COVID right now, or middle COVID, whatever you want to look at with vaccines coming out, today's consumer wants to buy when it's convenient for them and not when it's convenient for you as a business to go out and give them the estimate. So if you are not adopting this technology and your competition down the street does, um, 
the con today's consumers going on your website, social media, QR codes, there's a whole bunch of things that Dylan's going to get into. But if you're not available on the channel that they're looking to buy, when they're ready to buy, you are going to miss the sale most likely. So this is a key fundamental shift in buying um, and a technology shift that we really need to be aware of. And obviously in the service autopilot uh, ecosystem, if you're following Jonathan Potoshnik of the Lawn Care Millionaire, Jonathan's um, insight of being a revolutionary uh, person looking at where technology is going has really, really been, um, I think, the vision of Service Autopilot and his company, City Turf. So the, the fact that technology is shifting and this is kind of bleeding edge or cutting edge right now, you can out adopt your competition. Um, and I use the analogy to say Thrive. Um, imagine going into a box store and going to buy a flat screen TV um, and they've they're running a special and you go to buy it and no one's sitting at the register. You got cash in hand. Well, right. what are you going to do? You're going to get on your mobile phone and go to this Amazon Prime and have that bad boy shipped to you two days with no shipping. That's what we're doing, folks, right now on most service businesses. We're forcing people to fill out a static form on our website and telling them we'll get back to, back to them when it's convenient for us. Now, the form is great because some people haven't shifted, so you need a form plus the automated bot for not only estimating but customer service. Um, and Dylan's going to get into how that can go through your website, text messaging automated. QR codes and a whole bunch of other things. So Dylan, um, I just wanted to put some context if somebody was wondering what the talk from SA Thrive was about and how does that relate to how do they actually build this in their business themselves? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great breakdown. So the chat part, uh, the chat bot is like the first iteration of that, right? Everybody kind of has seen those on, on people's websites where you go and you might ask some customer service questions. Well, that's, that's the foundational part of this, right? Like you said, having the conversations, being able to speak to people on demand, right? Now, the chatbot can take away some tedious tasks like um, customer service things, right? But we'll show you how we took it kind of one step further. Uh, and that's really where you're going to be able to buy back that, that crucial, crucial time. Whether you're a large company or a small company, um, you know, it, it's essential for both of those people. And... Basically, like you said, right, people are not going to wait uh, a week to, to get a quote. And I have a lot of people that say, well, I get my quotes out really, really quickly. Well, usually the, the switch that is flipped there is they might be getting their quotes out really quickly now. But come the spring rush, when you have 20, 30 estimates coming in per day and you're sending them out, maybe you have an estimate follow up automation that's helping you out from there. You're not going to be able to get that large influx. If you do a big email marketing campaign or a big postcard campaign, there's going to be times throughout the year where you're going to have a massive influx. And that's where you need to make your marketing dollars go as far as possible. And having leads kind of slip through the cracks uh, is really going to hurt that, right? Um, so kind of estimator bots, right? Uh, I mentioned the chat bot is kind of the first iteration of that. Well, what's the difference between a chat bot and an estimator bot? An estimator bot still has components of a chatbot, but of course we're actually trying to quote the services and sell them on the services, which is a, a pretty, pretty key distinction. So the, the estimator bot serves a, a lot of main functions, right? Yes, we're having that uh, conversation on demand. We're able to provide the quotes on demand, but it also weeds out a lot of tire kickers. I know a lot of services here, whether it's a, a higher price service that might be very, very difficult to quote, because of all the variations like Christmas lights or maybe a big design build patio, right? Maybe that's not necessarily something you'd automate the quoting through this bot, but how many leads have came in over the past year for that service, let's say, that were completely oblivious to what an actual professional patio costs to be installed, right? They were maybe thinking, eh, maybe it's gonna be about $1,000 or 2,000 bucks, maybe 3,000 bucks. Well, that's probably not even your minimum price to go and e even think about installing a patio. Right, so being able to um, weed out those tire kickers or price shoppers, right, which is another thing. Everybody's kind of received that quote or that call saying, hey, I'm calling five other companies, um, but what's your price for lawn mowing? What's your price for home cleaning? Well, you don't really want to spend too, too much time with that person because obviously they're just shopping around for the lowest price. Um, but having an estimator bot set up will be able to attend to that person, give them the price they're looking for. And if they are serious, well, they'll come back. Um, so does that so, make sense, Mike? 
Yeah, Dale. So if I'm hearing you right, basically what the, the estimator bot is doing, that customer service bot is basically it's qualifying the consumer to make sure they're in the service area and there's actually at least a decent price fit. And it's getting your salespeople or your office in front of the hottest, most qualified leads when they're ready to buy. And we're, we're, we're basically prioritizing our focus on the most qualified and hottest leads and also avoiding a lot of double entry and issues we may have from the office going inside the service autopilot because the bot's starting to collect all this information um, and when we're ready to get them, uh, we can sync that information in the service autopilot. So we're not only saving time on the front end, but eventually on the back end as well. Yep, no, for sure. And how we're able to do that, right, is it does require a little bit of input, right? This isn't something that gets set up in an hour and you're just reaping the benefits of it, right? Uh, you or, or we need to do a, basically we need to replicate your service pricing in the back end of the spot. And that's how we're able to buy back your time and give those custom estimates based on their property parameters, which we'll get to in a, in a second here. But that's how we're able to give them that exact quote. And this thing operates, of course, 24 seven, right? So like you mentioned earlier, people have some pretty unique buying habits nowadays. Well, a lot of people are coming in at, you know, 10 or 11 p.m. at night where, you know, hopefully you're not uh, on the phone answering these quotes while, you know, you and your, the wife are watching a movie or whatever that might be, right? So this is going to be built to accommodate all those crazy buying patterns, um, but it does take a little bit of setup, right? And that's that's kind of where we would build out the, the pricing structure for your main services that you want to funny funny you mentioned my wife is actually calling but literally buying habits like my <laughs> phone was like did, 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 right across the uh the nightstand literally it, it between like 11 p.m and like 2 or 3 a.m my wife woke up and thought i was having an affair for a hot minute because my phone was blown up believe it or not it was the estimator bot um going off for people hitting it in the middle of the night no one was in the mm -hmm. office we did 10 p.m and 3 a.m so it allows you to qualify the people and get them off the street from stop shopping you and it, it that's a you've emotionally taken them off the off the off the market um and i think dylan you're gonna hit on it but like you know sometimes we don't have to commit um 100 in but we've taken them off and we can reaffirm the price and the data that's based on it we can have some disclaimers in there um, but the idea is we want to be the first to get them and close the sale as close as possible and, and depending on your comfort level you can close it and just keep on with your day and have it fully automated as well yeah, for sure. And that's all that a lot of people are looking for, right? Uh, unfortunately, contractors and a lot of service uh, industries have kind of gotten a bad rap of, of not getting back to people, not answering their phones, stuff like that. So the minute that people are presented with a quick, nice response and maybe a pretty exact quote, uh, they're going to be pretty impressed by that. And they're going to say, wow, this company obviously has their stuff together. Um, yeah, they're, they're probably going to um, be able to get me all set up tomorrow, even if it is 11 p.m. at night. So that's that's definitely really key. Now, the other thing I mentioned is is shopping carts. So a lot of people have heard of kind of shopping carts that you can check yourself out on, right? And they say, well, how is an estimator bot necessarily different from a shopping cart? And there's some pretty, pretty key d distinct differences, right? So our, our bot and, and kind of any bot, right? You want to make sure that you're hitching your cart to a, a platform that is going to be updating. That's why a lot of people have chosen, you know, service autopilot. Service Autopilot's constantly coming out with updates, right? If you look back five years, uh, the program was not capable of doing what it's doing today. So same thing with the estimator bot that, that we have and that we're kind of recommending is you got to be hitching your cart to someone like a Facebook, like a ManyChat that is coming out with new features, right? This technology is moving fairly quickly. So if you kind of are, are hitching your cart to potentially a company that's a bit of a laggard, well, two to three years from now, is this bot still going to be functional? Is it still going to be uh, doing what you need it to do? Probably not, right? So that, that's that's really, really key. We're constantly updating it, and there's constant updates coming out that we're implementing most of the time for free for the majority of our users that are using the bot currently, which is key. Now, I, this is my favorite part, and I talk to a lot of people um, about this specific product. It's not a sales brick wall. And what I mean by that, is Mike, I'm sure when you were going out to properties, um, quoting people for lawn care, right? When you actually got face to face with them, you were having a, a little bit of a conversation with them. Uh, your closing percentage probably went way up, right? Versus you just sending out blind quotes and, and kind of hoping for the best. Right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and obviously that's not very scalable. So that's why we have the, this bot that's gonna be doing that. But rather than me just going to, you know, Callahan's lawn care and you had a, a checkout page there, well, if I have any issues with that or I'm not liking the price, 
am I still submitting that and still trying to sign up? Probably not, right? So what our estimator bot does is it allows you to actually chime in as, as the conversation is happening. And if something is going awry for whatever reason, well, you as the owner can use your sales ability uh, and either call the person or just chime into the conversation that's happening and either fix that sale or let the customer know, hey, we've got some other options. You want with the most expensive option. I'm looking at your property online right now and it looks like you would actually be a pretty good fit for our middle of the line option, which is still a great scenario. So having that ability to save some of those sales is gonna ensure that your lead flow doesn't go way down versus just having this one static thing on your website that either people are buying or they're not buying. There's no real in between. And you bring up a good point, Dylan. So a live person can go in and actually interact. So like you said, it's not a static shopping cart. And a lot of times you have like an abandoned cart because people go in to buy it and you have no idea they're in there and they leave. So Garrett Matthews has been kind enough to allow us to talk about his success using a chat bot or an estimator bot. Uh, Jer Garrett Matthews was on the uh, SA Weekly talk show a few, well, uh, this spring um, with Jen and, and, and we were talking about this and uh, Garrett's stats were pretty insane. Uh, I believe he shared he sold about a three hundred thousand dollars of services um, over a two month span. But some of the success was his team getting in and grabbing some of those um, opportunities, like Dylan's talking about. And then, if you looked at that, his lifetime value approximately for that that those two months of sales was about one point four million dollars. Now, full transparency, Garrett doubled down and did some ads on there, but he, I believe he had about a three thousand dollar ad spend. That equated out to be about a one point four million dollar. You heard that right, one point four million dollars worth of client lifetime value. That's a huge return on investment. But when you're building this out yourself, if you go that route, the thing is you want to be um, understanding that these automated conversations should be supplemented with a live person during your working hours to go in and overcome some of the sales or price objections that may happen. But if it happens in the middle of the night, that conversation is still live for at least twenty four hours. You can jump in and reactivate it. Yep. For sure. And you'd mentioned earlier about talking to people where they want to be uh, having that conversation, right? We don't want to have them fill out a form and then we call them the next day or whatever. If they're coming in on Facebook or if they're coming in on your website, on their mobile phone, wh whatever it looks like, we want to be having that conversation right there. We don't want to shift them over to something else if, if possible. So having these this bot, which I'll show you in a little bit more detail in a second, link directly to an ad campaign is actually huge, right? They're, they're clicking on an ad, they're coming right into the bot. We're not taking them somewhere else where now you gotta fill out a form and maybe we'll get back to you. We're literally having that conversation right there. So I'll kind of show how that actually works, uh, the nuts and bolts of it in just a second. But this is important, right? Why, why should you care? This all might sound great, but essentially the nuts and bolts of it is, well, just like Mike said, what people are doing currently is really broken and outdated. The amount of people that don't have a proper web presence, uh, Facebook presence, and if they do, it's just a simple form and people are hoping that they get back to them. Um, that needs to change, right? And that's kind of what we're really recommending with this estimator bot. Um, basically, it's, uh, it's obviously gonna give you some better customer service, but there's more than just that, right? There, there's gonna be some significant time savings in addition to closing <laughs> sales when you wouldn't be available, right? So I, I love this uh, th this kind of diagram here. This is really gonna help people kind of understand how exactly uh, this works. And, and think of this as more of a, a high level overview, right? Yes, you've got your estimator, Bob, but we can build on this quite a bit, right? So like I said, this is very, very scalable. You can have an unlimited number of sales conversations here. So but Dylan, real quick, if I can I interrupt real two seconds. So like, if I'm looking at this chart, I've got the estimator, Bob, but we're talking a full, picture. So obviously most people here are either using service autopilot or considering using service autopilot. So we're a part of those 15 must have things that we're kind of highlighting here is yes, the estimator bot is another tool that ties into service autopilot that exponentially makes service autopilot more powerful. Mm -hmm. And once we're in service autopilot, a lot of the things you're going to be showing about is if you move to the pro plus level, including automations, this all can be done all inside service autopilot after you're driving the traffic in from the estimator bot. So we're, what we're doing is by taking this outside piece, we're amplifying the power of service autopilot and the native features of automation. So we're not having multiple system chaos. We're consolidating and moving up to that pro plus level of service autopilot. Is that correct? 
Yeah, no, you're you're 100% right. And the Pro Plus plan with Surface Autopilot uh, um, definitely really ties in well with this, like you mentioned. Because after the estimator bot, that's also important, right? Just just getting them the quote and then potentially accepting it is great, but that's really only half the battle. Um, you want to be able to continuously market to this person that you've paid to acquire, whether it's through, you know, a Facebook ad or, or or whatever that might look like, right? So once we've actually kind of um, greeted them and, and potentially given them a quote in the estimator bot, well. What happens here is really what's what makes this entire process extremely, extremely cool. We're going to sync them over to the CRM. So most of the time, that's going to be Service Autopilot, but we've also synced to uh, quite a few other platforms as well. And from there, right, if they don't accept the quote that we've given them, um, we can actually have that trigger an estimate follow-up automation. Right, we're we're pretty well known for our 20 days to close. A lot of people here are using that specific one. But this is also important, right? You got to be capturing the credit card and then also onboarding those new clients. If you have a massive influx of new clients, well, you can't just be closing the sale and then delivering the service and kind of neglecting um, the post sale support that is needed, right? So this part here is very, very cool because when they do accept the quote, whether it's through the bot or through a follow up automation, you're going to want to have that trigger some type of credit card update form where the, the customer is now greeted by that and says, great, thank you for accepting the quote. The next step to actually get your service scheduled is we need a card on file for you, and then we can go ahead and schedule your service. So this can all be working automatically in the background. Uh, and then basically after that, right, the, the bot is not done. There, there's still more that it can do. So think about when you're doing email marketing campaigns, whether that's in the spring, the summer, the fall. Um, you're gonna have ideally a pretty good response from that, right? That might be 100 or 200 people instantly that, that need that quote. Well, that's what I was mentioning earlier about you, you can't be taking a week to get back to all those people or else they're gonna have gone cold and really what you've done is you've identified the, the need that they have, but if you can't get back to them really quickly, well, I'm going on to your competitor and I'm, I'm requesting a quote from them. So having the bot linked directly to your email marketing campaigns and upsell campaigns is going to be key because we can now direct them directly to the bot and that bot can be uh, giving them an exact quote for their property all instantly, right? Like I said, so, you can have an unlimited number of sales conversations. So Dylan, if I'm understanding you right, the automations built inside Service Autopilot, whether it's by the individual or a certified advisor now can potentially be directed back into this 24 seven automated estimator bot to automatically quote services, property specific, um, 24 seven. And, um, I think you hit on it. You're going to hit on it, but basically it's not just Facebook, it's your website. And you can also text into the bot and have a live automated uh, estimating conversation there as well. So I love the fact that you're tying in the way you can utilize service autopilot automations as they are, and then amplify the strength of them to cause a 24 hour, seven days a week sales machine that literally drives the lead from the email into the bot. Huge, absolutely huge. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't, you know, aren't doing Facebook ads. They're not doing uh, Google AdWords, right? Well, how are you going to get people into this bot to make it, it really worthwhile? Well, email marketing is your key, right? You can do that free in Service Autopilot. It doesn't need to be through an automation, right? That's what we'd recommend, but you can do it manual, right? You can select all your leads or all your clients who don't have a certain service and say, hey, I want them to, to get a lawn mowing quote or get a home cleaning quote. And we're going to send them directly to the bot, right? So, Having that ability in a free manner in Service Autopilot is going to be huge so that, yeah, you actually do have a couple hundred people instantly going into your bot um, because, yeah, uh, a lot of people aren't, you know, they don't necessarily have the funds to be spending, you know, a thousand bucks or, or whatever that is on, on Facebook or Google ads. Right. And Dil, we got a quick question here from uh, Jeremy Gover. I want to say what's up to Jeremy as well. Um, just a rock star, but he says, our pricing is based on turf square footage. Will an estimating bot still work? Yes, Jeremy, if you're building a self or you need some help and you end up having an expert build it for you, but basically, yes, it will. So the biggest question that we see, and Dylan, feel free to chime in is, well, sometimes I estimate based on gross lot square footage um, or turf square footage. Well, the bot itself is going to pull information from Zillow and some other platforms for property specific pricing. So there's um, the ability to actually go in and, um, 
convert that as a percentage down to what the turf square footage was. So some free tools. If you're building it yourself, absolutely let us know. We're, we're happy to send you our kind of our cheat sheet, how to convert that down. But yes, um, Jeremy, it is going to be based on turf square footage. And that's what 99% of the people do. Uh, that's what I did in my company. And believe it or not, we were even selling snow removal through the bot the last five or six years. So folks, folks, this really isn't new, but it's cutting edge or bleeding edge for this for now. Um, so always trying to be an early adopter to this new technology. Believe it or not, uh, Callahan's Lawn Care had bots selling lawn care and snow removal for, for four or five years at least now, maybe six. So um, yeah, Jeremy, definitely can be based on turf square footage. Uh, we can do mulching. We can do mosquito control. We can do snow plowing. Um, hardscaping can create the conversation, start to qualify. So this really is applicable to any service uh, in the service industry. So floor's back yours, Dylan. I just want to grab that question that popped up. No, that makes sense. And, and we'll kind of go over what information we can grab and how we're going to make that useful, Jeremy, if you, if you do go off of turf square footage. So I'll get to that in a second. I don't want everybody's eyes to kind of skip right there. But uh, Mike, like you were saying earlier, right, this is kind of how we're going to break down and make sense to everybody how exactly our, our bot works. And, you know, if you don't use Simple Growth Bot, right, you're, you're trying to implement it yourself. Right, this is kind of the process and those steps that you need to make sure it encapsulates or else you're, you're going to be missing out on some key things, right? Lo I love it. And, and it's same same thing with automations. Everything we do in the service autopilot ecosystem, we're literally lifting the hood up and showing you how we built ours. So if you're going out to build your own, here is an executable roadmap, just like we talked about at SA Thrive. So uh, if you're watching this and this is something of interest, we're, Dylan's literally going to show you how we built this. So if you want to go out and build it yourself, you can do it. This is literally the roadmap. So um, kind of kind of pick that hood up, Dylan, and show them what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's many ways that you need to make it accessible for people to enter in the bot. If this is just something that is hidden on a landing page on your website, you're going to have abysmal results, right? So you, you need to make this accessible. So picture this being kind of like the top of the funnel, right? You need to have that funnel wide, wide open. And doesn't matter if someone wants to text in or use the website or, or our Facebook page, or maybe they don't have a Facebook account, right? You need to make this thing accessible to everybody. So these are really all the ways that people can come in. You know, website, Facebook, email marketing, like we mentioned earlier, text message marketing. So this is a, this is a really kind of unknown feature of our bot, but you also get a vanity phone number, right? And people could literally text in and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a quote for this. And we're gonna basically ask them their property information just like we would on Facebook or on their website. And we're still gonna be able to run through the entire bot process, but via text message. Uh, it's really, really unknown, but th that's huge, right? People don't even need to go to a web page anymore. They can do it all via text message. Um, now QR codes, some people kind of roll their eyes, but this is making a, a pretty big resurgence, right? A um, lot of people know about QR codes now. I'm sure everybody's kind of gone to a restaurant uh, during COVID where there's no physical menus anymore. Uh, there's just a little QR code on the table that you scan it, pops up on your, your phone, and now you can see the restaurant's menu, right? So everybody is uh, a lot more accustomed to them now, and we're seeing uh, some pretty good success with some of these uh, on things that you might leave behind, right? So if you're a fertilization weed control company, well, you might leave behind an invoice and on there, maybe you're running a little promotion in the bot that they could just scan that and be taken directly to that promotion in the bot. Home cleaning companies are using it as well um, to be able to, uh, you know, feed people back into the bot to get recurring service if they just received like a one-time service from them. Um, so after, you know, people enter the bot through all these ways, right? Well, we need to be welcoming them. And that's the first thing when they get that immediate response, they're not going and looking to get a quote from another competitor. Right now, you've got their attention. So what you do from there is, is really crucial, right? So we want to be welcoming them, welcoming them uh, properly and, and quickly. But then we need to gather that information. So this is going to be key. And this is the information that we're going to sync over, which I'll go into more detail over here. But this is going to allow you to market to them in the future, right? So if you've got hundreds of people coming into your Facebook uh, page every month, well, you need to be capturing their information and putting them into your CRM so that you can market to them later, right? If you're not doing that, you're missing out on sales opportunities. Um, so next is where our bot kind of starts to work its magic, right? We don't want you to have to go and measure the property um, or, you know, go to Zillow and 
a lot of home cleaning companies are doing that. This is the first step in their estimating process. They're going to Zillow and they're looking at the livable square footage of a home. Well, that's a really mundane task that of course can be automated, right? So when we have the uh, the address, right, their, their street address and their zip code, we're doing an automatic Zillow lookup, uh, which is gonna pull in their property size and their home size, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do, especially if you're a lawn care company, kind of referring back to Jeremy's question here, is we're gonna minus those two, right? So we're instantly talking about uh, closer to the turf square footage amount. And then from there, based on your area, right? Uh, certain areas are gonna be a little bit different, but if you are pricing based off of turf square feet, well, we are gonna apply a formula and we'll, we'll run through some testing with you to make sure that we're very, very close to the actual square footage amount. So that doesn't get you to an exact square footage amount, but it gets you really, really close. And where the saving grace to all of this is, is usually people are pricing their lawn services in a range, right? It's not one square foot of lawn is this price. It's usually, you know, 25 to 3,500 square feet is, this, uh, is a certain price, right? You have these ranges. So we'll be able to get it within that range. And then we'll be typically able to arrive at basically the exact price that you would if you were measuring them manually. Um, does that make sense up until there, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed it. Absolutely. Okay. And then from there, that's where we're getting the instant quoting, right? So we're, of course, we need to determine, okay, what services are they actually coming in for? And we don't want to bombard them with a, a menu of, you know, 20 different services that you offer. We want to be talking to them about what they actually came in there, right? What is their big, big pain point? And then from there, we can upsell those common add-ons, right? So if they're buying lawn mowing and you typically want to bundle that with a weed control fertilization package, we can offer that right in the bot. And it's a very digestible way to upsell, right? Rather than say, hey, here's our entire list of services, pick something that you like, and, and hopefully that's not too much information for you. Yeah, I think you hit on a key point there, Dylan. So if you've been following um, Jonathan Toshnik of the Lawn Care Millionaire, or if you're in the Service Autopilot Academy or Lead Academy, if you've never heard about the, the Academy, something you really should check out. Uh, really, really groundbreaking stuff. I had the uh, privilege of, of doing a five-hour plus um, talk for the Academy uh, a few months ago, and really, really impressed with what Service Autopilot Academy has done. But one of the things I always talk about in Academy or when Jonathan does his Facebook Lives or Lawn Care Millionaires, he's talking about um, selling gateway services that lawn mowing, fertilizer. So same kind of methodology, we're going out and selling the initial gateway service, we're not complicating it, and then we're allowing the bot to follow up, almost like when you're on Amazon, like, hey, most people who have bought this also bought this, but you've already committed to it basically. And then they're just doing a soft upsell. That's kind of what the same methodology is. We're closing the initial sale and then prompting the upsell. Exactly. Yep. And we did, we did build a follow-up right in the bot. So if you don't have the pro plus plan in, in service autopilot, or you're not using an automation uh, in your CRM, well, luckily we've built kind of just a basic follow-up right in the bot. So if they go cold, they get preoccupied with kind of something else, whatever's going on in their life. Well, the next morning we're gonna follow up via email and text message. And we're gonna to try to re-engage them and say, hey, that quote is still active, but not for forever, right? So if you still are interested, uh, click here and then they're re-engaged with the actual thing. So that's gonna um, basically re-engage a lot of people, especially if you're not doing any estimate follow-up right now. I mean, you, you gotta be doing it, but this is a, a great first step in that process. And then the last part that we do, right, is we're we're syncing all this information over to your CRM. So a so lot I, of people- And I'm glad you mentioned that. So we are syncing these bots um, right in the service autopilot. So it's alleviating yep. all that double entry, all the pain, the confusion, and it's adding them into the lead with the lead source of um, the bot. So now we've got all the good data in there that you need synced over automatically, no double entry. And if you're using service autopilots forms, you have the same idea when it's on your website. So now we've got um, different channels that these leads are coming in for. And, and once again, now the salespeople aren't typing all the information in, they're just working the hottest, most qualified leads and buying that time back. So I'm glad you mentioned the sync with um, service autopilot with the bots that we've created because it, it really has been a huge time saver for folks and it's been a game changer. Yeah, and it stores all the pertinent data, right? So then when you do go to quote them potentially on some new services, well, their, their turf square footage or, or whatever we're bringing in there, if you're a home cleaning company, maybe it's home square footage, that's gonna be saved in there. So you don't need to go and remeasure their property if they contact you in a month and they do want extra services. So that's really a seamless transition, but the sync kind of uh, solidifies the entire process, right? 
um, once we've actually quoted them, we're syncing that over, and then you're taking it from there with your CRM uh, of choice. So uh, kind of last thing here but that, that we'll leave people with um, is the case study, right? Like Mike, like Mike had mentioned, uh, Garrett has been a very early adopter of the bot. And, you know, he, he does use the bot in conjunction with Facebook ads. That's not really the important part here, right? It's not the ads. It's, it's how many leads we're talking about. How you get those leads is up to you. You could be posting a, a funny video uh, like Chad Duncan each day and getting those leads to, to come in, right? We have some really unique ways. This could be email marketing, like I mentioned earlier, right? 322 leads come in. And basically what Garrett was able to do um, in addition with this estimator bot, and yes, he did have his team uh, chiming in to save some of the conversations, right? But he was actually able to obtain about 25,000 in monthly recurring revenue. So not just one-time jobs. Wow, that's yes. phenomenal. And that's and that's actually higher than the number I actually gave you guys because this was when we talked to back, back in this. I didn't actually, I didn't realize this, but I'm just gonna do some quick math. He rounded up to 25,000. It's 12. Yeah, so actually, no, that isn't, Mark. So it's about, that must have been the, the original number. So it's 300,000. So that math actually adds up. Uh, we're not telling, you know, stories here. This is pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, so I think you had said 300 in annual revenue that he was able to obtain. And yeah. hopefully those customers stick around for a while, right? Yep. So that's not even the lifetime value of those. The lifetime value of that could be well north of a million dollars. Yeah, and I think with Garrett, we calculated out it was approximately 1.4 million. So it was uh, $300,000 of... Um, yearly revenue basically acquired in the first two months of the season last yeah. year. And I don't think we can stress it enough, right? It's not the ads that are important here. It's however you get these leads. You could be doing a garden show. You could be doing some, some home show in your area. You could be doing email marketing. Um, anything that you can do to get these people in, that's the important part. It doesn't need to be necessarily spending ad dollars and getting these leads in here. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the full process of how our bot works and how you could potentially take some of these things and implement it. Now, if you did have any questions about the bot itself, I believe we still have our land pa uh, landing page up. So you can go to sgbot1.com and you'll actually be able to see a webinar replay where we went into a little bit more in-depth in analysis of kind of what the bot does. We actually did a live demo as well and you'll be able to check that out. And if you did want to sign up or book a call with me to kind of see if this would exactly work for your business, we can definitely discuss that a little bit more, but feel free to take these principles and kind of run with them ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. So this, this really is the blueprint of how we build these things out for people. Um, you know, several hundred of these live and, and in play. Um, but yeah, if you're building this yourself, these key foundational things, watch the replay. This is how we broke it down. This is what we did. And man, I got to say, it's a good looking dude on that screen, Garrett Matthews. So Garrett, if, if you're watching, brother, we love you. Just whew, probably driving the ladies crazy down to Shreveport, Louisiana. In that video. <laughs> but, uh, but, but Garrett is an early adopter and he did this, but it's not too late because 99% of the markets do not have this. So at least in my market, we've been doing it five or six years. There is not a single person that I'm aware of in my market, which is a very large market that has adopted anything even close to this. Um, so, I mean, it, it's ripe for the picking in your market, be the early adopter out, out basically adopt your competition and dominate 2021. Um, but definitely you, you want to watch this go back to that flow chart because Dylan really has lifted the hood, how we've built this here. Um, and if it's something you're interested in, you want some help and you don't have the time, obviously feel free to reach out to Dylan. I believe it's SG bot the number one.com. Um, and you can watch the full replay. I mean, it's, I think it's almost an hour and a half to almost close to two hours, um, complete with question and answers. And you can really dive into what we did, uh, last, I think two Thursdays ago. Um, but it was, uh, we started at 8 PM and we were done around 10, 10, 15 at night. So there's a recording of the whole thing, including live questions and answers around bots and automations and everything else. So Dylan, any closing thoughts or, um, anything there? And I'll make a note, um, in the comments here uh, for that link here as well after we go off live. Okay, perfect. Yeah, not very official, but I just threw it in there um, just in case sgbot1.com and then 585-416-0876 if you want to call or text if you got any more questions about it. Let me, uh... And yeah, you can't really see it on the screen, but I'll, I'll post it up in the... Uh in the commentary here at the uh, afterwards. So Dylan, that's the best number to get a hold of you if people had questions around best practice with bots and things like that then. Yep, 100%. Awesome, yeah, Chris Chris, uh, Chris McCleary says, one new customer can pay for the investment. So absolutely, Chris, whether you're building yourself or you need some help, 
Um, but this is this is the the expert workflow: how to go out and opt out opt out adopt your competition for on demand buying. Um, and if you bought the recordings for SA Thrive, um, it would be actually a really good time to go back and watch that um, keynote talk that I did around this because this uh, is the execution. But the talk was more of the theory and the actions leading up to the execution. So uh, we kind of rounded out really well. So, um, no, we came out a little bit early today, Dylan, uh, with your schedule, my schedule. But I'm going to try to grab a, a quick drink because I got back to back calls until 5 p.m. Eastern here. But um, I really appreciate it. If you're watching this live or in the recorded version, drop your comments, questions on there. We're going to watch this for the next 24 to 48 hours. As always, we're going to come back at you with the SA Weekly Talk Show starting back again next week at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central. Uh, your host, Mike Callahan, right here, bringing you the latest and greatest things around the service business, how to go out and out learn your competition or how to adopt your competition and how to use Service Autopilot as one of the main tools um, and vessels to do that. So we'll see you again next week, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central, SA Weekly Talk Show, Mike Callahan with guest host, Dylan from The Simple Grow Team. We'll see you again next week, guys.